Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. As you can see, I'm in the lean-to and it's empty. I've taken all the citrus out and uh, they're in the cellar under some grow lights. But hopefully it'll be for the short term while I quickly try to complete this project here. I want to put a bench in and uh, before I do that, I've been meaning to put some insulation in the bottom portion of the walls here where I do not have polycarbonate and then put another uh, half inch probably plywood on top of that and then I could start building the bench and I have this solid foam insulation that I want to use if you were to use like a fiberglass that would just act like a sponge even though it's it's pretty dry in here um, you know it would just absorb any any type of moisture and retain it in the walls so I have this solid here. It actually fits perfectly in the cavity that I have uh, created with these 2x4s. So uh, yeah I've been cutting it and uh, initially I was using uh, a razor blade not too safe and finally ended up using just this saw I had uh, sitting around. It's kind of a fine tooth and it goes pretty pretty easily and a pretty smooth cut which you mark down the line with um, a sharpie so I've been trying to get this as exact as possible since it's it slopes a little, a little bit away um, so one side is shorter than the other side it's not just a complete um, square so yeah and I have this um, commercial grade plastic grating that is a bench it's actually used for benches in a commercial setting and I'll just frame in with two by fours uh, a bench top and uh, then I can just set this plastic grating on top that way water will drain uh, I want to figure out a way to have water get caught underneath the bench so it just doesn't drip onto the floor and slope uh, away from and into the corner here I don't have any drainage there so it sort of puddles so I have to figure out what I'm going to do on that but yeah that's uh, what I'm doing right now putting these pieces of styrofoam in You can see, you can, uh, makes it easy to make pretty good straight cuts instead of making multiple scores with a razor like I initially was trying to do. But that works out. So there you can see I have two pieces and now I just want to do the remaining here on the side wall and here and then I can start building the bench. So I've installed all the foam and now I'm just uh, putting up half inch plywood. I already did that wall. Uh, I'm painting both sides. I've got a can of that uh, two-in-one paint and it has the primer and the paint in it. Don't know how, to, how they do that, but since I have it, go ahead and put paint on both sides since it must, uh, it's gonna get humid in here at times, hot humid, and it's not uh, pressure treated plywood. So I already have one piece cut, it's an 8 foot uh, piece, about uh, 24 inches wide. I keep on forgetting that uh, the slab here not only it slopes away from the house in two directions, so when I cut the angles, uh, or when I cut anything I have to remember that there are two angles if I want to uh, take that in, into consideration. So it actually gets narrower up here, approaches more like 23 inches and then about uh, 24 and a half inches on this side here. So I've got the plywood set up, I've got shims on the bottom there. I cut it a little short because I want to have a gap there, I don't want it wicking up any puddles that might form. I really don't have a way of, I was thinking of drilling a hole 
in the concrete or through the the sill there uh, to let water get out but then bugs could get in uh, but anyways that's why I have it up a little bit So I've got that piece of plywood in place. I just have one piece there. I have to cut another piece for this side. And then uh, start building or framing in for a bench top that I can put the citrus on instead of having them on individual uh, milk carton crates like this one here or upside down buckets like I've been doing. All right, so this is where I'm at so far. I have the top of the bench uh, framed and I just have to put some more supports underneath but basically the back wall is supporting it and I already put the 2x4s in the corner there underneath the uh, vertical ones that I have for the top it's going to be a lot of weight on this and then the center one here, I wasn't certain what I wanted to do. I was going to do a half lap, so I had a little bit of a shoulder holding the uh, 2 by 4 instead of just nails. And I wasn't certain how, how I was going to position that, whether I was going to have the half lap like facing the front or the back. And then I realized what I could do is just face it like this. And I cut off this portion here, so there's a shoulder underneath, so it's holding this. And I get uh, two faces here. I can put in nails from this side, uh, or screws from this side, and then screws from this side. So I, I like the way that turned out, and probably one more going from the front to the back here. Although, once there's weight on this bench, there's no way that this 2x4 is going to give or um, to be able to kick it out. So put some paint on this, and it should be all set. I want to put my citrus out here, it's getting nice and warm and sunny out. No comparison to the dim grow lights that are under right now, fluorescent lights. Okay, so I slapped a coat of paint on. I think it looks pretty good. Let me show you the top I want to put on this. And here it is. This is a commercial grade bench for a greenhouse or a nursery. It's two by eight. And you can also purchase uh, legs of various lengths. Of course, they, they cost more as they get longer. I think the most expensive, maybe 32 inches, I think. It's about eight, nine dollars a piece. But this top here was $61.61. At least that's what the catalog says. I forget what I paid for it. Close to that. I've got a 2012 catalog here. So I found this place close to me. And uh, that way I'm able to save on shipping costs. I, I think everyone's heard of that. What is it? Greenhouse Mega Store, I think, something like that. But then you have to pay for shipping, which can be outrageous. So let's see, I think it was on page 70. And this is, you know, if you get, get them set up with the legs, this is what they'll look like. But this way the pots can breathe and they can drain. Uh, I don't know, I think I'll just put one of those cement mixing uh, containers underneath as I water each plant to catch the water. I like to set up some type of tray system to collect the water so it doesn't uh, pool on the bottom here. I don't even have like a drainage hole. It usually collects in the corner right there. 
And it's really heavy duty construction here. And you can see how the legs fit in un underneath. So let me go put this on top of the bench. And that's what it looks like. I like it. It's just a little bit longer. My bench is a little bit longer than eight feet. So I have this gap here. I think I just might put in another two by four here and nail in a piece of plywood. I was wondering if I wanted to slide this this way and have the gap on that end or have the gap on that end. I think I like it like this. So I can bring my citrus out now and put them up on the bench here. I like it. Should have done this a long time ago. So this is New England Gardening with a nice new bench top upgrade to my lean-to that I'll make good use of. For now, I'll put my citrus on there until I transition them outside for the summer. Thanks for watching.